Okay, today we're going to be making my world famous loaf of meat. Got to make it first. Using my super, super secret recipe. Don't tell anyone the secret recipe. Before we proceed, leave a comment. Let everybody know that you will not reveal the super, super secret recipe. And we can start on the video. I'll put the ingredients in the description and make it easier for you. We need a half of onion, a ball of garlic, and a fresh pepper. It doesn't really matter which color of the pepper you get, the bell pepper, the red, green, yellow, orange. The green was the cheapest, so I got it. I usually get the orange if that's important, but they didn't look that great. So I got this one. Now we're going to be using half the onion, about maybe a half a cup of onion, it should be. scrap thing there. Course you want you want to wash the vegetables off really well first and you want to wash your hands really well first which I've already done that All the seeds flying in the floor, I'm gonna have to sweep up afterwards. Doesn't have to be perfect. I used a larger half. and put the other half up for later. This is just a regular white sweet onion. But about any onion will do, really.
Now we use a whole bulb. If you don't like garlic that much, you don't have to use the whole bulb. We use a whole bulb of garlic. If we can do it without cutting myself. And now we just mince this stuff up. That should be pretty good. We can mince it up a little more, but you want everything chopped up pretty fine. And that's our vegetable part. Okay, now we'll want to saute these over a medium flame. Or medium heat, whatever you call it. First thing I'm going to do that I'm curious about, it won't be 100% accurate, but I'm going to go get a meter reading. Okay, so that's the reading for right now. A medium heat, a little olive oil, or you can use coconut oil, either one. I prefer the unflavored so it doesn't change the taste.
we're looking for a temperature of around 300 to 350 degrees. And I got 163 so far. So we'll let that heat up. So we're getting there. So we're in the range. And we're going to put our vegetables in without spilling them everywhere. And we're going to saute these from about five to eight minutes at the most, roughly. We just want the onions to caramelize and the vegetables to get soft and to burst out that flavor from the garlic bulb. Now, while this is simmering a little, we want to mix a few things here. tablespoon of celery salt. Uh, or a little more than a tablespoon. Mmm, that smells good. tablespoon of thyme leaves. Mm, that also smells good tablespoon of oregano leaves.
Make sure you keep this stirred. tablespoon of basil leaves and a tablespoon of lemon pepper seasoning. And that's our dry ingredients. We'll continue to let that saute until the onions become a little translucent. You'll want to watch your heat and make sure it doesn't get too hot. So we're only at 225, 198. So the hottest part of the pan. Is one is 236. So we're still good. You could have it a little hotter if you wanted it, but no more than 3 350. You will burn the vegetables. See, some of the onion is starting to get transparent looking. I don't know if that shows that really well on camera, but... And we're around the seven, eight minute mark here. And somewhere around the eight minute mark or so, the frying noise should be lower than it was when you put them in. And you should have relatively soft vegetables. Now you can do this now or you can add it in later. I think it works a little better if you add these in now, just the whole cup and just like dump it in. The heat can kind of bring out a little bit of the flavor. 
and our dry ingredients. And we can continue to saute just a minute or so longer, not much. And this is ready to set to the side. I think that's pretty much done. So let's set it over somewhere. Off the flame to cool and cut that off as well. Okay, so now let's, I'm waiting for this to cool a little so I can work on here. I had to take the little covers off because they can't take the heat and will ruin if I leave them on there. So, and the stove vents behind here, so that one has to come off when you cook anything in the stove. So now we need a large bowl. Okay, inside a large bowl we want to put three large eggs slightly beaten or crap beat out of them one or two Should be good. Okay. We want two cups of milk. Now for milk, what I do is I use powdered milk. This is non-fat powdered milk. I don't think it really matters in the meatloaf. But I also have whole powdered milk. I think I really save money as far as powdered milk cost as much, if not even more than regular milk. Where I save the money is milk goes bad before it's used. I use very little milk, so the powdered milk I can buy a box of it, you know, and have it for quite a while. So we want to put in, I've already mixed it. I put the water in first, then I put the powder in. So it doesn't have any clumps in it. And shook it up. Put it in the refrigerator. Although you really don't have to put it in the refrigerator. So you got two cups of shook up milk. Then you want to fold in three cups of plain breadcrumbs. Of course, you can't really whisk those. So 
gunk up the whisk. So we'll have to do that a different way. Okay. And the one. Two. Count them with me. That was two. And roughly three. Stir that up in there. It sort of makes a pasty kind of thing, but that's okay. Get it well incorporated. So you really couldn't whisk that. It gumps up the whisk. It's not important how I know that. Okay, now that's ready. We can move on to our glaze. Is that still hot? Yeah, kind of. I'm not going to put it on it. I'll put it over here. I don't want to melt the bowl. Now the glaze, we need a half a cup measuring cup. The glaze is a half a cup of ketchup, a half a cup of barbecue sauce, and a half a cup of tomato paste. Which what I use for the tomato paste, this is 4.56 ounces, so it's close enough to a half a cup. Uh, so I just yeah, like use the whole tube, that way I don't have to try to figure out how to keep it from going bad later or something. This normally makes a mess. Can do it without making a mess. Okay. Well, maybe not. That might be all we're getting out of there.
Okay, so a half a cup of barbecue sauce. A half a cup of ketchup. It don't have to be good quality ketchup, just ketchup. New show, Cleaning with Alan. And finally, the tube of tomato paste. Basically, I just squirt the whole thing out. As a half a cup would be four ounces, and this is 4.8. Uh, what did it say? 4.4.56. Sorry. Okay, and that, my friends, is the glaze. So we'll thoroughly mix that up. Delicious. Well, not by itself, anyway. And we put that to the side. And okay, now, in this same big bowl, we're going to add our meats. Here's what we're going to put in. Okay, that's cooled down. We're going to put 80-20 ground beef chuck. And we're going to put, well, they've changed. And the battery died, so anyway. So they've changed this. At Walmart, this used to be, the pack used to be two pounds. Now it's two and a quarter pounds. So I guess it's not a biggie. But we're going to incorporate a pound of sausage, or you can use a half a pound, either way, and the two and a quarter pounds of ground chuck. I like the 80-20. I think the fat to meat ratio is better. You don't get as hard a beef. It's soft and more delicate, palatable, more the crumb is better. I don't know how you say it. 
It just seems to work better. So into our big bowl, we're going to mix in the ground chuck. If you want to wear gloves to do this, you can. It's like my kitchen, my whatever. Although I keep my hands clean anyway. You don't have to put the whole thing in there, but I normally do. Okay, now before we start to incorporate that, again with the washing hands, A Worcestershire sauce, which whatever this sauce is called. I'm going to add a, a half a cup of it to the mix. If there's a half a cup left in the bottle. So we're going to give this some stirring. Fold everything together. And our, our Jimmy Dean sausage. Normally I just use a half a pound. I'm going to try it with a pound this time and see if it's any better. But a half a pound of Jimmy Dean regular sausage. 
Get it all mixed together real good. Nice and incorporated. You can use your hands if you want. You don't want like thick pockets of any one ingredient. You want it all blended together really nice. Of course, try not to over blend either, but that might not be as easy done as it is said. Just cut it in, fold it in. Nice and blend it up. Okay, so you also add, which these should be cooled down good now. So you can, if you want to mix it with your hands, you shouldn't be able, you know, you're not going to burn your hands or anything, but you add all your vegetables. And this is the entire, this is it right here. This is everything. Get it all mixed up really well. See, it's not that difficult. Oh, there's a big piece of garlic right there. The better it's blended without over blending, the better evenly distributed all the, the flavors and juices and everything will be. You don't want little pockets of one specific flavor. This is a blend of ingredients, perfectly matched. Well, as perfectly matched as I can do it. Again, if you want to use your hands to mix it, that's fine. But see how it's starting to incorporate and all look relatively the same with the green dots from the bell peppers? You want it thoroughly mixed. And I think we're about approaching that now. Wait, thank you all the way to the bottom. Okay, it looks, it looks pretty well incorporated to me. Personally, we don't want to over mix it or anything. Even though if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. We don't want to do that here though. Okay. 
Okay, let's get rid of all this stuff. Okay, so we need our pan. Now I can't put a little coal or anything on here because I want the grease to drip down in the holes. Now what we want to do is we want to pour it out and make a loaf. Hence a loaf of meat. If you see any clumpy parts like that, break that up. Don't leave that like that. Make sure you get all of it out of there. Sometimes the seasonings will stick to the bowl and you won't get all your seasonings. use your hand if you want, but you don't have to. Okay. It'll stick to your hand just as easy, but anyway. So you want to form a loaf. about two or three inches thick. And this much basically kind of almost fills the pan, really. You don't have to square it off if you don't want to, but it's fine. And I'm going to call that pretty much done. Put the can off of there. Okay. Now we want to preheat our oven, which I should have done already, to 350. So we're going to take our glaze and apply about half of it. Not all of it, just about half of it. Or in this case, a little more than half. Okay, about half of the glaze. <laughs> I'm just going to paint that on there. Work to get an even coating as best you can. It's, it's not paint, it's glazing, but and on meat, so it's not going to be perfect.
You can, if you like, increase the amount of glaze. Technically, what I've got here is barely enough to do the job, but you can make more of it if you like. And then we just wait for the stove to be warm enough. not centered in the pan good. Okay, so now we're at 350. We've got to move the camera to get to the oven part. Okay, so we'll put it in for roughly 30 minutes. on it. focus good. I'm going to put it on 28 so I can uh, chime that down because this will cut off in a half hour. But it's about to cut off in a couple of minutes anyway. And of course I won't bore you with the whole half hour of watching the clock countdown. But anyway, And that's about it. So now we want to We want to paint on the rest of the glaze. Trying to get it as even as possible. 
all around, even on the sides. That'll be cleaning up. So now what we want to do, it needs to cook to an internal temperature of at least 160. I like to set it on 162. But sometimes this stupid thermometer thing don't half work. So you want to keep a close eye on it and check it every little bit or something. It should take another, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes or something like that. That is, if this thing's working correctly. So let's put it back in for a little while longer. Don't buy this brand, this is junk. And that's probably not right. I'm going to check it though. Because theoretically it should cook at least an hour. That's not near an hour. It's just saying 145, so it's not done yet. This brand, the thing is just garbage.
So I'm going to set it for about 20 more minutes. And come back and check it in a little bit. Okay, let's see what we got here now. This thing ain't working with the crap, so. Actually, it might have been working. It's saying 181, 184. This is saying 177, 178, 179. So maybe that's working all right. Anyway, you want to cook it about an hour until the internal temperature is at least 160. I normally like to have it at least 161. 162 or something. Let's cut the stove off. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? Okay. Look how juicy that is. Can you see that in the camera? Look at that. Now you want to let it set for a little while. It'll dry up a little. Just setting. You want it nice and flavorful. Mm. It's kind of falling apart. Look at that. Maybe we should consider one more egg or something to bind it together better, but... Now let's check the... And this is after the meatloaf's cooked. Mmm, that's delicious. So give my local meat recipe a try. If you don't think it's the best meat you've ever had, well, you... You probably messed up the recipe somewhere along the line. Just try it again. 
Uh, thank you for watching. It's time to eat. And we can start on video without breaking the stove. But I also have whole powdered milk. That I threw in the floor. Edit that out. And then I put it in the refrigerator. And now it won't open. It's now I'm gonna take it out. Do that again. Cut this part out. So now we want to 